Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to our reboot of the webinar Flexible Recording Mechanism in CPROTEC 5. We are back, this time with everything running smoothly and tested to the core. So thank you once again for your understanding during our first try. My name is still Christoph and I'm again excited to be your host for this event. Today's webinar focuses on the available recording mechanisms of CPROTEC 5 and especially the recently implemented recorder types for both modular as well as non-modular Cyprotec 5 relays, the slow scan, continuous and trend recorder. The differences of these recorders will be presented and their applications explained. To supplement the theory, Marcus, our expert, will conclude with an in-depth demonstration and guide you through the process of setting up the different types of recorders all of which will be showcased with the digital twin. The webinar will, of course, conclude with a Q&A session. Please note that you will not be able to pose your questions directly during the presentation. Nonetheless, you are already invited to insert your questions in the Q&A box located in the top right corner of the window once you exit the full screen mode. Simply switch from the chat tab to the questions tab and insert your questions there. Directly after the practical session, our expert will address your questions live during the Q&A. If we should run out of time during the Q&A, questions which, which have not yet been answered will be answered separately. Furthermore, you will have access to the on-demand recording of this webinar right after the session. But more details about this at the end. These technicalities dealt with again I'm very pleased to introduce to you, or rather to those of you who did not attend our first try, our expert of today's webinar, Markus Kraft. Markus, with more than 30 years of experience at Siemens, is one of our most experienced application specialists who is promoting our solutions in the context of the digital substation, such as the process bus technology, as well as our fault recorder portfolio encompassed by the 7KE85. Furthermore, with his years of experience in the research and development of our power quality software, where he started his career, Markus is the ideal specialist for introducing you to the comprehensive recording functionalities offered by the Supertech 5 protection relays. Markus, I'm glad you could join us and the stage is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much, Christoph. And yeah, good, good morning and good afternoon, everyone out there. In today's webinar, you will learn what kind of custom requirements can be fulfilled on using the new recording functionalities, which are now implemented in all Cybrick 5 relays, independent if modular or non-modular. I wish you much success on watching this webinar. And now before we start, let us take a look on the agenda. At first, I will give you an overview about the various recording mechanism of our Cybrick 5 platform. After that, we will have a closer look inside the dedicated output formats. You will learn what's the difference between the file formats of fault records and long-term power quality recordings. In chapter three, I will introduce you into the recorder types, beginning with the old school protection fault recorder mechanism, which is available since numeric controlled relays are on the market and end with a trend recorder. With a new slow scan recorder comes in chapter four, the possibility to define various trigger mechanisms to start such a slow scan recorder. Here, you will get more details about level and gradient trigger settings. After that, theoretical introduction, I will show you how easy does it is to equip an overcurrent relay like 7SJ85 with that new recording features and route the measurements to the corresponding recorder. Sure, like you know from my previous webinars, I will test this parameterization using the Seabrake 5 Digital Twin for displaying a slow scan record, continuous recording timeline, and trend record timeline in Seacom BQ Analyzer. And finally, I summarize up the customer benefits on using the flexible recording mechanism inside Seabrake 5 protection devices. All right, let me now give you an overview of the various recording mechanism. 
On the left side of the table, I've listed the different recording functions. The first row shows the well-known fold recorder mechanism, which works in relays, then they change from mechanical to numerical one. Here, I would like to inform you about the first new topic in the webinar. I will name the mechanism inside the protection device from now on protection fold recorder, PFR, to make it absolutely clear that the function name fold recorder in the relay has nothing to do with the fold recorder device 7KE85. And by the way, the 7K85 with its fast scan recorder is marked in gray because this device is not part of today's webinar. Our focus is today on the protection relays and its recording functions. In version 880 was a slow scan recorder SSR implemented in modular and with 940 into non-modular protection devices. The slow scan recorder has various trigger possibilities, about which I will introduce you later in the presentation. Also new for protection devices is a continuous recorder mechanism. The continuous recorder is designed for long-term recording of average values. And the last in the row is a trend recorder. The trend has the task to record power quality voltage event signals like voltage dips and voltage swells. The sampling speed of the trend recorder is half cycle, means in 50 Hertz networks, each 10 millisecond and value. The output format as well as the customer use cases for continuous and trend recorder will be explained in the dedicated chapter. On the screenshot on the left side, we can see that the default parameterization covers only the Ford recorder or better set the function protection Ford recorder. To equip a protection relay with the new flexible recorder functions, it is necessary to drag and drop them from the library. On the right side, you can see that the library offers for the 7SJ85 continuous slow scan and trend recorder functions. Drag and drop them into the recording section of the device settings. To avoid copying all the flexible recorder description into each of our protection device manuals, we decided to initiate a dedicated CBREC 5 protection recording manual. In that central manual, you can find all detailed information about protection forward recorder, slow scan, continuous, and trend recorder. All the recorder mechanism of the 7K85 forward recorder is not part of that shown document. The 7K85 does also have slow scan, continuous, and trend. However, especially from the recording duration are huge differences between the functions in the protection and the functionalities inside the forward recorder device. And to avoid misunderstandings, we named the document here Cybric 5 Protection Recording. At the bottom of the page, you can find the download link to get the manual from the SIGOS portal. Actual version is 9.60. It's brand new, just released a couple of days ago. The data formats for Ford records and power quality. In the next chapter, I would like to make you familiar with the different output or data formats of the recorded measurements. Let us start with a well-known complete format defined in standard IEEE D37.111. Okay, the good old complete format, by the way, the acronym complete stands for a common format for transient data exchange for power systems. What does that mean, transient data? The content of a forward record are various characteristics and typically binary signals. Furthermore, a trigger timestamp is part of the COM rate. For example, when the overcurrent pickup was detected. The recording duration can be parameterized and covers mostly a couple of seconds. By the way, forward record in complete format consists at least two files. File number one covers the measured time series. It has a file suffix DAD, DAT, 
And the second file describes the structure of the dot file with the suffix CFG. Which customer use cases are supported using complete fault record? The main use case is a post-mortem analysis of a fault or incident. So protection fault recorder mechanism was started by a pickup or by a circuit breaker operate signal. The time series of the signal can be visualized in the instantaneous or RMS measurements. A very interesting topic is the energy network behavior before the incident happened, means before the relay pickup becomes active. Therefore, the measurement of a dedicated pre-fault time will be stored in the fault record. Pre-fault or pre-trigger time of half a second is very common. Okay, all the measurements can be visualized in timeline diagrams, circle and vector diagrams. Also a fault location calculation can be done based on the measurements inside a complete file. So binary signals are located just below the timeline signals. Such binary tracks showing the circuit breaker or isolator states before and during the fault. A very important information to analyze how long does it have taken to clear the fault in the energy network. The protection fault recorder can also be external triggered, for example, by a binary signal or a GU signal. For that, the protection fault recorder trigger behavior needs to be changed from pickup to user defined. Let us now take a look on a fault record in complete format. We can see two timeline diagrams and two binary tracks on the bottom. The upper timeline shows the RMS values of the current for each phase and just below the RMS values of voltage. Here is a trigger line with date and time information shown. The time span left hand side of the trigger line is the so called pre trigger time range. The cause of the triggered record needs to be gathered on analyzing the binary tracks on the bottom. In the example, record was an increased voltage level above 105% of nominal voltage the trigger criteria. The next format is a proprietary CIVIC 5 native format. With the development of the 7KE85 Ford recorder, also CBRIC5 native format for records was implemented. But now let us speak about the CBRIC5 native format used by the slow scan recorder function inside the protection devices. The CBRIC5 native record of the SSR covers RMS values. In the information routing matrix, can independent or depending on the customer requests, signals of various characteristics, analog values and binary tracks be routed to the slow scan recorder. The benefit of the multiple trigger lines and enriched trigger we will see on the next slide. The recording duration of the slow scan recorder is up to 90 minutes. That allows to record for example, the startup behavior of large motors until it reaches its target speed of rotation. Also, it significantly improves the analysis of the record when multiple trigger criteria are combined of trigger criteria becoming active. I used instead of fault record now the name record because a slow scan could be a kind of report or documentation for maintenance activities. A possible trigger scenario could be to get a record when the gradient trigger detects a current rise of 500 amps during two cycles and the transformer temperature is at the same time above 70 degrees Celsius. But let us now take a look on the native format. I guess on the first few, the multiple trigger lines attract attentions. The first trigger line shows, like in the complete format, the date and time, and furthermore, the cause of the trigger. The maximum limit of voltage for phase C was overstepped. Trigger starts now means on. The next trigger line informs us that the first trigger criteria is finished, visualized with off. 
And during the actual running recording, one more trigger criterion becomes active. In that case, the current of phase A has increased above the maximum current limit. All right, that's so far from the differences between Comtrade and Cybrex 5 native format. I will continue now with the next new data format in the protection world, the BQDIF format. The BQDIF standard or BQDIF standard named comes from the IEEE 1159, was developed to define a standardized exchange format for long-term time series of average values. Since Cybrix 5 version 920, the continuous and the trend recorder functionalities inside the protection devices store their measurement in BQTIF file format. The time series of various average values of characteristics are stored in pairs of value and timestamp. The storage format of BQDIF is binary. Therefore, you need a BQDIF viewer software to visualize the measurements. The length, or better that the content of a BQDIF container could be from some minutes up to hours, days, or weeks. For example, the continuous recorder in our relay is parameterized to record 10 minute average values the routed characteristics are voltage, current, and unbalanced. A big diff of one hour duration covers now six 10 minute average values for voltage phase A, six for phase B, and six for phase C, plus six 10 minute average values for the current, and so on. Let us now take a look on the data interchange procedure for which this standard was designed for. Such a customer scenario could be to analyze a dedicated characteristic over a time range. In our example, how does a voltage timeline looks like compared between working days and weekend? Or another one, how is the active power consumption during the winter season compared to the summer season, which much more air conditioning load? Here, a timeline of six months needs to be visualized. Okay, to compose all these long-term measurements together, we need to transfer all the BQDIF container recorded by the protection relays into a database. And afterwards, to show that characteristics in an user interface software. And here is a solution. The 7SJ85 has a continuous recorder instantiated and provides every two hours a BQDIF container via IEC 61850 to the station, substation automation system. The CCAM BQS is extracting all the measurements from that container and stores the content equidistant into an archive. The CCAM BQ analyzer here on the right side is the user interface and displays all the archived measurements. On the next slide, you can see how such a time series over a month looks like. This is now a screenshot of the PQ Explorer available in Seacom PQ Analyzer. It shows in the upper diagram the voltage, in the middle the frequency, and below the active power of the complete July 2023. This one month time series consists of 372 transferred BQDIF containers of a length of two hours. Okay, that's so far from the data format. Let us now forward to the recorder types and their parameterization. For the four recording functions in a Cybrix 5 protection device, that reminds me to inform you that the slow scan, the continuous and the trend recorder are available for booths modular and non-modular devices. Let us now start with a protection fault recorder. The PFR starts recording with a pickup indication, optionally when instantiated without a recloser. The third option is user-defined. With user-defined settings, we can start the protection fault recorder on a routing an SPS signal with XT to the recorder. We learned already the only one output format for the protection fault recorder is COMTRADE. 
the minimum content are the sampled values of voltage and current, additionally 50 measurement values, so-called MVs, and up to 200 binary signals can be routed. The sampling frequency is adjustable from one up to eight kilohertz. The available memory allows to store up to 60 comrade records with four current and four voltage channels. Here, the memory works regarding the first in, first out concept, means before a new record to be stored, so all this will be deleted in the device memory. The amount of possible stored records in the memory depends on the number of channels, the recording duration, and the sampling frequency. That also valid for the pre and post trigger time. Here is a screenshot of the settings dialog of the PFR with a pre and post trigger as well sampling frequency parameter. On the right side of the page, you can see that the maximal recording duration as well as the pre and post trigger time depends on the chosen sampling frequency. The next on the list is a slow scan recorder, the SSR. Starts like the protection for the recorder with a trigger indication. New with the introduction of the SSR is the trigger routing. More details about that routing in the next chapter. It's important to know that the slow scan can be started using a level trigger, gradient trigger via binary signal, via goose message, or using in CFC continuous function chart. From content point of view, measured values, MVs, binary signals, SPS, as well analog signals can be routed into a slow scan record. The averaging time can be parameterized in cycles to make it a little bit better understandable. One cycle means every 20 milliseconds an average value. 50 cycles write each second a value in the record and the longest settings for 3000 cycles means every minute an average value in the slow scan record. To do the limited device memory for the recorder, it wouldn't be possible to parameterize a slow scan recorder of 90 minutes with one cycle averaging time. In the second line of the dialog, you can see how large from file perspective or file size a slow scan record can be. Nevertheless, Dixie will inform you about invalid combinations of maximum recording duration, post trigger time and averaging time. We have seen that the new recorder function needs to be tracked from the Dixie library. One slow scan instance is already on board. For a second instance, you have to spend 40 function points. Maximal two instances of slow scan recorder can be activated per relay. Now a very important topic needs to be considered on routing measured values into the slow scan because the default offered operational values are not compatible to route into the slow scan or continuous recorder. It is very important that you use instead of the operational values the optimized routing function blocks, which can be found inside the recorder routing section of the device library. Simply drag and drop first the function recorder routing UI from the library into the function group voltage current three phase. And afterwards, for example, the desired function blocks like routing voltage for voltage measured or routing PWR for measured values of active power. Please consider the number of routable measurements on the next slide. Here we can see on the left side the correct routing measured values provided by dedicated routing function blocks. Maximal 75 measured value signals can be routed into a slow scan recorder and 30 measured values per continuous recorder. Now we are coming to the continuous recorder function. We can remember from the introduction of the PQD format that the continuous recorder functionality stores average values into such a PQD container for transfer it into an archive database. The CR measures and calculates average values based on the configured averaging time. 
A very typical averaging time is 600 seconds. That means 10 minute values are sufficient for long-term time series of days, weeks, or months. Hence, more than the 30 measured value signals per continuous recorder are a second instance can be instantiated. In some, maximal two continuous recorders can working in parallel. One instance is already included. The second consumes 25 function points. The last in the round is a flexible recorder collection is a trend recorder. The trend recorder starts recording and storing when a rooted signal leaves a parameterized tolerance range. What kind of data can be recorded? All kind of binary signals and measurement done by BQ trend and BQ flicker function blocks. The averaging time is fixed half cycle, means 10 milliseconds in 50 Hertz systems. Up to two instances can be recorded. Like the continuous, also the trend recorder requests 25 function points for the second instance. In the lower area of the slide is a timeline recorded by a trend recorder. Important to know is that only the signal changes are stored in the memory, here marked with blue circles. As long as the signal is not leaving the parameterized percent value of the tolerance window, nothing will be stored. This mechanism ensures an economic usage of the device memory, and that's with a half cycle sampling rate. The function blocks PQ trend and PQ flicker need to be dragged from the library and dropped in the recorder routing section for routing power quality conform event and flicker measurements. The measured values MVs provided from that function blocks as well as a binary signal can be routed with an X into the instantiated trend recorder. In the next chapter, I would like to introduce you into the new trigger mechanism for the slow scan recorder. The chapter recorder trigger in the library offers trigger functions for current, frequency, power, and voltage. Current voltage covers function blocks for fundamental, RMS, positive, negative, and zero sequence systems. Drag and drop the desired function from library into the function group voltage current three phase one of the device. Now we will take a look into the trigger settings. Let us assume the following customer use case. Customer wants to get a report when the phase independent RMS value of current increases above one amp, or when the current rises very fast by 0.5 amps. That rise should be detected without crossing the 1 amp upper limit. Means the magnitude in relation to a time span needs to be monitored. This is a so called DMDD or gradient trigger. Let us do the required trigger settings step by step. Step one the mode of the current RMS trigger needs to be switched on. Step two, the max trigger value will be parameterized. In our use case, one amp. Step number three, the filter time for the gradient trigger needs to be set to two cycles and the rise magnitude value is 0.5 amp. And step four, switch off all unused trigger functionalities. That's so far for the trigger settings, and now the assignment of the trigger criteria into the recorder needs to be done. The trigger routing, we can decide if the trigger indication should start a slow scan record or not. Not could be that the indication should be communicated to a control center without starting the slow scan recorder. So now enough for the theory. I would say after a five minutes break, I will continue with a live demonstration. All right, thank you very much. See you in five minutes. 
Before I start with the parameterization of the recorders in the new 7 sj 85 protection relay, I would like to make you familiar with the used software applications in the live demo. With Dixie 5, I will do the complete parameterization of the overcurrent relay 7 sj 85 When that is finished, I will export a simulation file. That simulation file will be uploaded into the digital twin and simulates the device. From Dixie, a second file is required, the so-called device description or IID file. This file will be used to integrate the device via IC6750 into the substation system CCAM BQS. The simulated device will provide data containers to the CCAM BQS. We remember BQDIF for continuous recording, use case and complete or CBRIC5 native for slow scan records. The CCAM PQS runtime will fetch all these data containers automatically from the device, store that inside the archive, and the CCAM PQ analyzer displays all that information in dedicated views. All right, let us now move to my laptop to the live parameterization. So first we will do some yeah, fundamental parameterization. That means we can see I have here an, an empty project, an empty Dixie project. The first step what we have to do is to add a device. I do a double click on this add new device. And here on the top, we can give here an, an long or an short code. For the device what we are using, I've already copied the long code into the um, into the field. On clicking on verify, it will show us that the voltage variant, the significant features, and all these are already pre-configured because uh, this parameterization was decided during creating the device or designing the device in the CBRIC 5 configurator. So the only one what we have to do is we have to use in the in the standard template the number one, the non-directional for current for voltage with an actual configuration version 960. Communication is already 960 pre-configured. Let's do OK. So, and now the device will be created. And when this process is finished, it will appear here in the project tree. So, the next step will then, when the device is visible, be we have to rename the device. We have to give the device a good name. The next step is, after the renaming, is the IP address. The IP address corresponds on the network parameters which the device is uh, um, designed for. Yeah. We have to activate the IC61850 communication protocol for the port J because we want to transfer the speakative and com traits and slow scan records and native records from the device into the CCAM PQS system via IC61850. PQDIF is a container type and IC61850 is the communication channel for, that, for this container. So and when the device is created, <clears throat> we will also switch, and this is also new, the Comtrade version from 1999 to the Comtrade version 2013. The Comtrade version 2013 provides information of cause and trigger with the Comtrade file. This is very useful because this cause and trigger information we can visualize later on in the CCAM PQ analyzer. This is not the case when we still using the Comtrade version 1999. So, and then we are renamed the PFR, the Ford recorder, to our, like we already uh, introduced you at the beginning, to protection Ford recorder. All right. So, here is our 7SJ85, our new device. It has a default name. So, first, what we have to do. It gives the device a good name. On double click in the device information, and we call this device 
overcurrent, for example, OC underline flexible recording underline 7SJ85. The same name we will use also for the IC6150 protocol. Okay, fine. Then with that, we go to hardware and protocols, select our port J, our communication port, and give this port J a valid IP address. So in the property section here on the right, double check port J, yeah, this is used. This is a default IP address. I will use here on 92. Um, 68.2.63. So, and we may not forget in the communication, we have to activate the IC61850. Because this is a connectivity afterwards between the device and the substation automation system, the CCAM PQS. So when this activation is finished, then we go to the recording chapter. Was my check not accepted? Yeah, now it's on, okay. So now we will continue to the chapter recordings in the settings. We select now our, the default name is Ford Recorder. With that, we want to rename this to PFR to protection fault recorder to be sure that no misunderstandings taking place to the device 7 key 85 fault recorder. Let me do a double click on that note and take a look in the configuration of the PFR. So we can see that the PFR starts with a pickup and has a pre-trigger time of half a second and a post-trigger of half a second. The so sampling frequency is two kilohertz. We let this like it is. And in the general chapter of the recording, we can now adapt the Comtrade revision. Default is 99. And we switch here to the Comtrade revision 2013. This is a version which provides additionally trigger and course information with a Comtrade file. This is still the standard. Nothing specially from, nothing proprietary. Okay, that's so far from the basic parameterization. Let us now fetch the new recorders from the library. I will close these windows and open the library on the right side. So here is a global Dixie library. And let us now select the 7SJ85 overcurrent relay. Here we are, 7SJ85. <clears throat> and when we scroll to the recording chapter close to the bottom and expand that, we can see that this provides us now continuous slow scan and trend recorder for our protection relay. We will drag and drop the continuous from the library into our recording chapter in the settings. And the next one is the slow scan, drag and drop to here. And last but not least, our trend recorder. The trend, drag and drop. Okay, they are now here in the recording chapter let us care about the parameterization. So continuous recorder, first of all, we will name, rename it to CR. Better than CR is when this continuous recorder name has also the sampling frequency because sometimes it will be used for 10 minute average values. And the second CR or a continuous recorder can be used for the 10 seconds values. And therefore I like to add here So suffix 10 minute and everything is clear. This continuous recorder is parameterized for 10 minute average values, 600 seconds. The memory of the device, of the protection device is reduced compared to the 7K85. 
Therefore, when we add more recorders now, we are overcrowding this memory and we need to reduce the dedicated memory yeah, ratio of the recorders. To avoid that, I will start here or I will change at the beginning the memory size to five megabyte for the continuous. So now let us care about the slow scan recorder. We will rename this as well, SSR for slow scan recorder. And here we change the memory also to five megabyte. All records will be deleted, yeah, that's clear. Nothing is in. And now let us care about the, the trigger time. The pre-trigger is by default five seconds, that's fine. The post-trigger is by default one minute, and this is very long. And with the um, uh, Civic 5 version 960, there was an improvement on customizing the post-trigger time in 0.1 minute steps. That means every 10 or uh, every six seconds, um, we can re-trigger a new slow scan record. Therefore, we have also to reduce here the re-trigger blocking time to 0.1. Good. Pre-trigger five seconds, post-trigger 0.1 minute means um, six seconds. Perfect. So that's for the for the continuous and the slow scan. So last in the round is a trend. Let us call it TR for trend recorder. Open the configuration dialog. The only one setting is a flash memory, nothing else, because this trend works with an um, two percent. Um, uh, how is it called, a um, um, window, threshold window. So we will also change these to five. Okay, so now the recorders are on board, they are renamed and they are parameterized, cool. The next one is a very important point. This is now that we have to use, instead of the operational values, the so-called yeah, recorder routing values. To get this recorder routing, we are moving now to the Dixie library. And in the voltage current three phase function group, come on opening, we have here a chapter called recorder routing. And in that recorder routing, it provides us measured values or measurement concepts for measured values for frequency, current, power, active power, voltage, PQ trend and PQ flicker. And these measurements are, how would I say, optimized, optimized for recording into slow scan and continuous recorder. Okay. Let us now drag and drop this recorder routing into the voltage current three phase function group. First of all, the recorder routing, drag and drop. And now we can move to the information routing matrix. You see it immediately changing that in the voltage current three phase. <clears throat> here are the bad guys, here's the operational values. No? We, we don't will use that. Here's also voltage, a uh, frequency, voltage, current, and so on. But these values are not optimized for slow scan recording. We will use our recorder routing. And inside the recorder routing, we will now drag and drop the routing for voltage, the routing for power, for current, And, and frequency we also use for the example here in the webinar. And to provide also measurement values for the trend recorder, we will choose a power quality trend function group, drag and drop, and the PQ flicker. Drag and drop into the recorder routing. Good. So these are now the measurements which have been optimized for the slow scan recorder. 
So what we now, what we can do now is we can assign the measurements to the dedicated recorders. The recorder we, fin we find here on the top. Now the PFR, our protection fault recorder for the um, relay pickup and so on. So continuous, which is parameterized in 10 minute average values. So slow scan recorder and the trend. So let us do some routings. First of all, we open the voltage chapter and we have it the face to face and face to neutral values. Just open that or expand that face A, B and C. We can route into the continuous recorder simply by an X. So what now happened is that the continuous recorder measures that values and will calculate every 10 minute n value. And this value will be taken into the PQDIF container. And when two hours are over, this PQDIF container will be provided with a CQM PQS. So PQS extracts these containers, stores all the measurement inside the archive and visualize this time series in the CQM PQ analyzer. What, okay, now let us move it also to the, to the, to the slow scan recorder or route it to the slow scan recorder. Good. What additionally we want to have the current because later on we will also parameterize the current trigger. Therefore, it's yeah, necessary or it's useful to have the current value into the, the slow scan recorder to see how is it increasing. Here we are. And it's also okay to keep it here in the, in the slow scan recorder. Good so far. Um, the power quality measurements like PQ trend, this power quality measurement like PQ trend, the face to neutral, we can see that they are not compatible for the continuous and not compatible for the slow scan recorder. They are designed to record it by the trend recorder. Therefore, we route this into the trend. So this uh, voltage signals of the PQ trend offers the rapid voltage changes, the voltage tips and swell signals, and this will be recorded and stored inside the trend recorder. Same procedure, trend recorder will be part of the PQDIF container provided to PQS, expanded there, stored inside the memory, and afterwards uh, shown in the CCAM PQ analyzer. And the PQ flicker is a dedicated flicker measurement concept here, mostly we use a PLT, so long-term flicker for power quality typical measurements, and they can also be routed to the trend recorder. All right, this is now from the routing point of view. Now, once more, use the recorder routing, the so optimized measurements for the slow scan and the continuous and the trend instead of these uh, by default available operational values. So let us now add um, a new trigger functionality to our scenario. The um, trigger should be then when the, um, the, the current rises, for example, above 0.9 amps. Yeah? In that case, um, an internal trigger becomes active and this trigger should start and slow scan record. So for that, we go in the, once more in the library. You can see everything what we need, you can find here in the library. And one below the recorder routing, we can find the recorder trigger. Let us use the current trigger drag and drop it in the function group voltage current three phase. All right. And when we take a look in the current trigger, we can see that we have trigger functions for uh, fundamental measurement. This means 50 Hertz. 
um, maximum, minimum rise and drop. These are the gradient triggers of delta magnitude to delta time upwards or downwards. And here an RMS trigger. I will delete the fundamental because we are using only the RMS trigger. Behind the RMS coming up the, the zero system, uh, the positive and the negative system for current. This I also will delete to make it yeah, quite more compact in this stage. In the PowerPoint, I showed you the steps what needs to be done for the trigger. And the first one was to switch the trigger functionality on. Okay, then we can choose if we want to have it phase selective or not. And the filter time for the gradient trigger, two cycles is okay. So we will use the maximum trigger, it's switched on. And the maximum value should be 0.9 amps. All right. The minimum trigger is not necessary, we will switch it off. And also the gradient um, active means no. Oh, yeah, and they are already off. Okay, no. Each functionality from the trigger point of view and recorder point of view, what you not need, you have to activate or delete. Yeah. So this means the complete concept quite more compact. What we are now doing is we are assigning this um, trigger RMS active signal into our slow scale recorder to have this binary signal in the binary tracks. For that, we will now take a look once more in the information routing matrix. And now we can find in our voltage current three phase, our new current trigger. Here we are. Trigger I RMS. Yeah, make all this once more, a little bit more compact. So, and here is a trigger active. Oh, that, that means when the trigger arises above 0.9 amps, this trigger signal becomes active. And I would like to have that binary signal into my um, slow scan recorder, SSR. Additionally, needs to be done for this current trigger, we have to take a look inside the trigger routing. And since the trigger routing, we find now also our current trigger of IRMS. And we want that when this trigger becomes active, we want to have a fast scan recorder started. And slow scan recorder started. Wrong name, fast scan is a 7 k 85 Okay, that means above 0.9 amps, the binary track will be added into the slow scan record. And this um, trigger routing cares about that the slow scan recorder starts recording. Okay, um, next one is our default um, protection behavior of the device, because we also want to have an, an, an comrade file using our PFR, our protection fault recorder. For that, we have to take a look inside the 5051, the overcurrent function. And here is a T1 settings, it's by default off, we have to switch it on. And it's a fundamental, the threshold is 0.5 amps. I think we let this like it is. Okay. This is necessary to get at the end and, and, and calm trade. So the next, what we have to do is to make it a little bit more, yeah, how to say, yeah, beautiful, more or less. That means I will now assign our dedicated signals and recorder start and stop behavior uh, two LEDs on the front panel. For that, we go once more in the information routing matrix and select the dedicated signals. Let us take first a look in the recording chapter. Move on that, make it more compact, but we need the LEDs, the destinations. So we take a look on the PFR, on the protection forward recorder and can see that we have signals for recorded, recording started here and record made. 
recorded start in means, the PFR starts recording in Comrade. And when this pre-trigger time, um, um, the signal goes back to the to normal, so post-trigger time starts, and then the forward record as a record is finished, and then the signals or the indication record made will be sent. This is, by the way, the indication for the CCAM PQS to upload this Comrade file from the device into the CCAM PQS archive. But we won't to assign these two indications, these two signals on LEDs. And a lot of are already occupied, but the number six for recording started, unlatched, and the number seven for record made. And the same procedure we will also do to have a clear picture that the SSR, the slow scan recorder, is active. Here also recording started, record made, it's the same concept. And this I will assign to the LED number eight and nine. Okay. So let number LED number 10 on the base module, I will use for our current trigger. Where is our current trigger? Our current trigger is in the voltage current three phase function group. Close to the end current trigger. And when this trigger becomes active, here one trigger active, I would like to assign this to the LED number 10 on the front panel. Here we are. Okay. Um, LEDs are by default in mm, um, red color. We have the possibility to, do, to change this. Therefore, let me change the record made for all the recorders here for the PFR. When we select here this um, column here and go to the settings dialog of the device, we can switch from red to green. So red means recording started, green means record made, record done. And the same one for the record made of the slow scan recorder. Settings, switch to green. Okay. Good. Um, let us now close this a little bit to have a better overview. One more um, topic what I would like to introduce you is that um, I would like to start the slow scan recorder on an external binary signal. For example, um, an automation system starts an enlarged motor and these start impulse, impulse should trigger the slow scan recorder. For that, um, we will use now a user-defined signal. Once more in the library, here on the bottom, so the user-defined functions, here we are, and user-defined function group, I drag and drop this here on the bottom of the information routing matrix. Here's my user-defined function group. Rename it MCAR user-defined. That's a, that I did it. Yeah. And in this user-defined function group, we will now add an, an SPS signal. The signals are just below the function groups. And we will take now <clears throat> A single point indication not stored, drag and drop, drop here inside. So, and this we will call now um, motor, oops, not done, come on baby. Motor start, to make it clear, this is a, an external motor start. Uh, how does this signal coming in into my system? It will be done on using an, an binary input. What well, that we it's in source. Uh, let me expand the binary input signals, and these are already occupied by yeah circuit breaker, isolators, or whatever. Typically for for protection, we will choose the next free one. It's a two point two. High when active. So when this external binary input becomes high. Then 
I want to start a slow scan recorder. And for that, we can now choose here in the slow scan recorder column, the signal or the, the, um, the parameterization XT. X means the signal will be part of the record at the bottom as a binary track. And T means that this signal triggers the slow scan recorder. And with XT, we have boost together. Oh, that means when this signal via binary 2.2 becomes high, it will now start and slow scan record, and this binary track will be part of the record on the bottom. Okay. And that we want also to see on the LED number 11. Here we are. Unlatched. To have it also on the front panel. So, and now we will take a look on the front panel because sometimes, uh, mm, how to say, the, the naming in the front panel in the display in, on the LEDs is not, not optimal. Therefore, we go to hardware and protocols, select the front panel and move the properties area on the top, move out the library to have more space. And now we can see here our default naming, pick up face A, B and C, Trip command open. These are the default settings from the protection point of view. Recording started, record made, recording started, record made. Hmm. Now that's cool. However, I don't know what recorder was started. Therefore, I rename it to PFR start. And the next one. protection for the recorder made. This one will be red, this one will be green. And here's the same procedure for the SSR. Take care about, of, about the length of the naming. And here's a SSR made. So trigger active, hmm, okay. Trigger is cool. However, I need to know what kind of trigger. We can remember this was a, um, um, current max or yeah, 0.9 amp and remove the other one. So this means when the current rises afterwards in the digital twin above 0.9 amps, this LED should become lightning and it triggers also in forward record uh, in, in slow scan record. And the motor start is also a naming Let us call it external motor. Okay, so, so for these namings we are responsible for. Save the project. So from the um, parameterization point of view, I'm now through. What we now have to do is we have to export from the device at first an IID file and instantiated ID description file or device description file um, to um, forward this or to import this file into the CCAM PQS. Consistency failure, a oh, very good example. So this means um, the system has now found some inconsistencies, informs us that the IID export will not take place. Let us take a look what went wrong. On the left hand side, we can see clearly where is a, yeah, where is a problem. Let us move also here to the info pane. Inconsistencies to get more information about what, what is the issue. So advanced validation in the slow scan recorder. The pre-trigger time is greater than 20% of the post-trigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is complaining. Let us take a look in the slow scan recorder parameterization. So the pre-trigger is five seconds, the post-trigger is six seconds. Yeah, this is not valid. So therefore, let us choose this pre-trigger time to one second. So how is about now? I'm selecting the device and initiating now here manually and 
consistency check and it tells me everything is fine now. Good example. Okay, next try on exporting the IID file. Select the device, click on export, select the IID description, click on export, override because this is already imported, uh, already done before as a test. So successfully exported. You can find now in the file system an IID file. And the same we will do on export and so-called simulation file and SIM file, simulation data format for one a single or multiple devices. This SIM file will be afterwards imported into the digital twin. This I have already done in advance. This file will be used afterwards to import to the digital twin to simulate exactly our 7SJ85 what we have just before parameterized. When we now take a look in the digital twin, we have here on the right hand side the possibility to upload and, and such a simulation file, such a SIM file. Yeah? This is already has already taken place. It's now loaded in. It has a name what we have given, the so IP address, and I will start now the simulation of that file, of that device. And we move to the device page, and we can see that the infrastructure will be prepared, the configuration of the infrastructure, and the device simulation will also be started. The device here in the digital twin is one-to-one, -one like we parameterized just before in Dixie, with the name, with the LEDs, with the signals. And in the digital twin, I have now the possibility to simulate, simulate here measurement inputs. For that, I have to activate the, the values. It's 50 point, uh, 57 volt. Secondary represents more or less 400 kV face to face. And the current is 0.05 amps. Let us now do a test uh, that use case. So first of all, the first test we want to do is the binary signal of the external motor start. For that, I click here on the binary tab and on the bottom, you can see motor start. This is the name what we have given here in the binary signal 2.2, binary input. When I click on this um, um, field, then you can recognize that the motor start LED will appear and the slow scan recorder will be started because we assigned the XT in the information routing matrix. Okay, it's on. You can see motor starts, SSR starts. I switch the signal off and now we have to wait these uh, six seconds. This was as a, as a trigger time, so post trigger time and the green LED tells us, okay, the slow scan is made. Perfect. This SSR mate or PFR mate will be communicated now via IC6250 from the relay to the CCAM PQS substation automation system. And this PQS will now go down to the relay and upload via IC6150 this um, slow scan record. One more test scenario is be that that's a um, current trigger, when it becomes above 0.9 amps, it should show us this IRMS trigger LED. And also we are trigger routing, we are starting the SSR. For that, I will increase now the value 015, 25, 35, 45, 55, 85, 95. And now the trigger takes place, current RMS, slow scan started. Prima. Very good. Trigger is gone. Slow scan takes these six seconds post trigger time after the um, after the signal went down. Okay. And last but not least, to also create a comrade file, we will increase now the current directly to 1.9 amp to have this uh, overcurrent protection function active. And then it should show here and pick up completely all the phases and the PFR starts. The slow scan starts as well because the slow scan is above 0.9 and we are now increasing directly to 1.9 amps. 
zack, 1.9 amp, and now we have a big up. We can see that the protection for the recorder has started, the yeah? so slow scan has started, and now we can quit, so pick up, reset the LEDs, and now let us take a look into the Seacom PQS system. First of all, in the Seacom PQS UI operation, you can see that the system is running, the archive is online, is running, the IEC 6150 protocol, and here is a double OG pass webinar flexible recorder with the device. It's also green. That means that the Seacom PQS here on my laptop is online via VBN connection to the 7SJ85 in the cloud in the digital twin. Okay, so let us now take a look on the Seacom PQ analyzer to visualize the records what we have sent. And here we are. We can see now that on the 7SJ85 flex record feeder, we have in some five records. The so first one here on the bottom was a slow scan record at this timestamp. This was a fold number one, and this was a motor start. This was the indication or the, the binary signal to do for the motor start we have tested in the digital twin. When we take a look inside this slow scan record, and switch here the profile to SSR. And we can see on the bottom the three phases uh, of the current, of the voltage. And when we go down, we have the two binary tracks what we have assigned. You can remember one was a trigger active and the second one was a motor start from the automation system. And here was a binary track for the motor. I checked the box for on and I unchecked the box for off. And additionally to the um, only one trigger line for the comrade, we have now two lines, number one and number two. Here was a flex start on and here was a flex start off. This one from here to the left is a pre-trigger time. So one second and everything above the, when the um, trigger criteria was off, then it's a post-trigger time. Let us check this with the cursors. I bring it together now, it's a, a zero nearly. And when I move here to the end, it's 6,000 milliseconds. These are the six seconds post trigger type after fault. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next, what we want to take a look inside is the current RMS trigger. Trigger I RMS number one for all the three phases. Double click on that, SSR profile. Here I have increased the current stepwise and here was the upper limit, the so, um, 0.9 amps no, for the current trigger overstepped. This means the IRMS maximum phase A, B and C becomes active here. Very useful information on the trigger line. And when we go down, we have now the binary track of the trigger active of current becomes active. And with this duration, I switched the current to zero and then the trigger was inactive. And from this onwards, we have our post trigger time of six seconds. What I want to point out is the Cyberdeck native format provides more than one trigger line and additionally trigger information on the trigger line, not only date and time, also what happened. And because we are using um, or we have parameterized the complete format with the version two, uh, 2013, we have here trigger and cause information in detail, very useful. And here on the top, we have now in Ford record, this is now the Comtrade. This was done because of the yeah, overcurrent um, relay trip. And I do a double click on that. Then we can see only one trigger line here at the beginning. The current was increasing. And here we have the default um, binary tracks, which are st standardized for 
uh, 7SJ85 over current protection relays. Uh, here was a pickup, here was the operate. It was behind the pickup. What does it mean? Um, it is, let me take the cursor to here, to zero, and the pickup was here. It's 300 millisecond delayed. When we double check that in our Dixie application in the parameterization for the overcurrent trigger, then we can see that the operate delay is 0.3 seconds. Here we are. No? Okay. So that means uh, our test is yeah, successfully done. Last, what I would like to show you is um, the continuous recording. And because that the device is now running for a couple of minutes, we have nearly no continuous recording inside the device memory. Therefore, I would like to show you a continuous recording in my Seacom PQS system of an, of an Q200, because the Q200 um, continuous recording concept is one-to-one -one the same like we have implemented inside the protection relay. And when we select here, I mean, continuous recorder functions inside the Q200 and do a double click here on the timeline mean value. Then we can see on the right hand side the timeline of voltage. Let me choose one more, the timeline of frequency. So right now nothing is in because this is a day of today. But when we zoom out, we have the November 23 and here we have recordings already till yesterday afternoon. This is a voltage, this is a frequency. From 1st to 6th um, November, when we go one month to the left, then we have the complete October. And this is now really, really cool, no? because this is so huge amount of PQTIF containers are automatically transferred from the relay or from the recorder to the CCAM PQS, stored inside the archive, and then I can visualize it a, a, a timeline over a month. When I click here on the month, I can see the timeline over, over a year. Okay, this system was set up in the mid of March, but you can see here all the voltage measurements of 10 minute or one minute average values in the year, and here's a frequency. Zoom in works in the same way. You know? Click on November, click on 5th November, and then we can click on an hour, 10 minute value to zoom in and now we have the one minute average value steps which have been provided by the uh, PQ recorder. And here are the 10 seconds average steps provided by the, um, of the frequency provided by the PQ recorder. When you want to have um, two kind of average values in your protection relay, you have to instantiate two continuous recorder. No? Continuous recorder number one with 600 seconds averaging time and for the frequency recorder number two with 10 seconds averaging time. Yeah? From the concept of transferring PQDIF containers from the device to the PQS, this does not matter because all the PQDIF containers will be automatically transferred as soon as they are completed. Yeah? Okay, that's all from the practical point of view. Let me now summarize the benefits in the PowerPoint for the flexible recorder concept. Okay, um, I know that was really a, a lot of information in the last hour, therefore let me let me summarize the benefits of using the slow scan, the continuous and the trend recorder in our protection relays. The individual and the sensitive parameterization of the triggers of the slow scan recorder allows to report and monitor anomalias in the energy network. It is not necessarily a fault what needs to be recorded. Also, procedures like changes during start of motors can be recorded and compared with previous recordings. The long time series done by the continuous recorder over weeks or months, what I've showed you just before in the CCAM PQ analyzer, can give an indication about slowly increasing problems in the energy network. And one instance of the SSR, the slow scan recorder, the CR, the continuous recorder, and the trend recorder already on board, one more instance requires function points. 
And I think this is very important to equip, equip already existing installations with these flexible recorders. There are no hardware changes necessary, neither in voltage and current transformer, nor on the protection device. So, and now I'm at the end uh, with my presentation. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. And uh, Christoph, uh, hopefully we, we got a lot of questions in the Q&A. How, how does it look like? Let me join you on screen. Yeah. Markus, thank you, first of all, for your detailed explanation and very much for the presentation you showed us. It was a pleasure. It offered us very, very insightful new information on these recorders and recording functionalities. Um, let me just, before we jump into the Q&A, I quickly mention a few highlights that stuck with me. Um, first of all, no hardware changes necessary. No hardware changes necessary. Yeah, that's yeah. the most important thing, I think. Yes. Um, the only thing that's required is a firmware update. Yeah. Um, to the version in 9.60. Yeah. When you have old one, no? yeah. We exactly. request an update. Yeah. We have our um, software which can um, help to showcase the data which has been collected in the past. Yeah. Um, From each recorder, case, one instance is on board. Yeah. Second one needs to be yeah uh, wide with some some function points. Yeah. This means you are ready to start. Huh? And every protection relay can be equipped with these recorders. Modulars and non-modulars. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. So, do we have questions in the chat? Um, ah, yeah. Here, are someone. One one last hint. Remember to place your questions in the top right corner of the screen um, and we can consider them. But let's get straight into it and pick up the first one. Um, there was a question, uh, there was a question regarding the length of stored time series uh -huh. um, when it's collected basically up to weeks. Um, are all of these stored in the protection devices internal memory? And what is the size and the, the capacity of the storage? Ah, okay. Um, during the parameterization, we have parameterized the averaging time of the, of the continuous recorder. And we can decide if we have to one seconds or 600 seconds of 10 minutes. And this dialogue, it shows you how long, how many days can be stored inside the memory. Yeah. But nevertheless, when this relay is via IC6150 connected to a CCAM PQS system, every two hours, such PQDIF container will be automatically uploaded and stored inside the archive of the PQS. This means it's not a problem at all when the relay goes in a kind of a round trip mode on overriding the old memory. We are here on the safer side. Huh? Um, picking up on this, how many, um, how many SSR records can be stored? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same concept in the, in the slow scan recorder parameterization window. You can see the size of the record. Yeah. However, the size yeah, depends on um, some parameters. No, number one is the size of the device. This means how many signals are assigned to the slow scan recorder. Next one, what is the averaging time? Yeah. And, and last but not least, what is the recording duration? Yeah. And all these parameters have significant effect on the size of the, uh, of the slow scan record. But here, same procedure. When the slow scan is finished of the um, post recording time, post trigger time, then it sends a RCD mate indication to the CCAM PQS, to the substation automation system. And immediately this fault record will be uploaded and stored inside the archive and appears immediately afterwards in the CCAM PQ analyzer. So basically, you have a security if the connection, if the communication connection to the PQS is disturbed, then you have enough space to um, store. Right, right, yeah. I mean, a multitude of SSRs, and as long as the communication is up, then you also have the backup in the PQS. You're, you're right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but picking up on something you said just now, um, what is the shortest possible duration of the SSR? Yeah, there was in the, in the past, this means before 960 was a, the minimum 
post trigger time of the SSR one minute. Yeah. And this was extremely long because when I want to monitor a motor startup behavior, it could be that is uh, after some seconds it's, it's, it's finished and I want to have a shorter post trigger time. Therefore, with a 960, we um, brought the, the functionality to reduce the post trigger time in 0.1 minute steps. This means six seconds, 12 seconds, and so on. I've okay. chosen here 0.1 minute. This means when the binary signal uh, went away, then six seconds, and then the for, uh, slow scan record will be closed, since the RCD made indication of the PQS, and that's it. Okay. It's a closed system. All right. And the longest duration? The longest duration is 90 minutes. That's extremely long. But this uh, 90 minutes, it's not possible with one cycle um, sampling frequency because this will have an, an, a very, very big record from the file size point of view. Therefore, we need to have a, an, 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 an higher an, an, um, um, sampling okay. duration, averaging time. No? What do you recommend for this? Yeah, um, 100 cycles or whatever. Yeah, This means when I want to record such a long behavior, I think it's it's okay to have an 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 an, an, an slower sampling frequency. Yeah. Yeah. So that would mostly be the case for for longer motor startup periods. Yes, exactly, so or power swings or something like that, which takes longer than it's fitting in a contract. Okay. Yeah. Therefore, the slow scan was designed for. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and let's pick up another one. Um, what is the maximum number of analog and digital channels in in a contract file? Created by the fast, fast fault recorder. The, so, the fast protection fault recorder. I mean, that's the name is PFR protection fault recorder, <laughs> because a fast scan is part of the saving key eighty five. Okay. Um, we can map in the information routing to the um, PFR up to uh, has it been thirty? I'm not hundred percent sure. Or, or 50 or 75, I have to check that. But you will find this exactly in this manual, what I have um, you informed about is this Cybrick 5 protection manual. Yeah, It's slightly different between SSR, trend and continuous recorder. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So SSR covers 75 yeah, uh, measured values and the continuous recorder 30 measured values. And you need more, then you have to do a second instance of the continuous recorder and map these additional signals to that recorder. At the end, everything together will be transferred in the PQDF container to the CQM PQS. Do we have some more? Um, Is it possible to get a copy of the configuration file from testing in Ticketer Twin? Ha uh ha. -huh. Um, uh, the SIM file. SIM file. It, it's possible, yeah. It's not a secret because I did this live demonstration here. Um, I have to speak with the, um, with the marketing people how to transfer this because it's a, a big file. Maybe we have some, I, some we try, we try to do it. This one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, the expected lifetime of the memory. Oh, okay. Probably as long as the protection relay lives. Yeah, uh, uh, good questions. This needs to be checked in so called uh, type tests. Uh, I don't have that in mind. No. So, in yeah. general, I think it's. You can expect that the, or um, let's give it a bit more insight. You, you have, a, it's it's not a standard SD card that it's used, that is used. it's, it's um, an industrial grade SD card, mm. which is used to being overwritten again and again and again. So yeah. um, it's a vast difference than the standard SD cards or the standard, um, uh, the standard storage space that you that you are uh, that you have in the PC. Yeah, um, you have to keep in mind the main functionality is protection for this protection relay. You know? This is the main exactly. use case. This may not be disturbed. Yeah, and these con these recording functionalities are so-called add-ons. They are using a dedicated part of the memory for these measurements. But from the lifetime point of view, it's a protection relay. Yeah, the memory will last as long as the yeah. um, protection relay is active. We have a question regarding the power quality. Um, what class of IEC 61000 4 30 is the Cyprodec 5 hardware functions compliant to? Mm. Yeah, it's um, it's um, um, class S. We know it's 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 not class A. Class A is accuracy of 0.1%, but for that we have in our portfolio the PQ recorders like Q100, Q200. These are class A machines. 
with an absolutely different uh, measurement hardware on board because they are designed for power quality. Yeah, the protection relay is a protection relay. Yeah, and this measurement is uh, are complied to um, class S. This means an accuracy of 0.5 percent. But only that needs to be clear. Yeah. But only an an excerpt of those that are actually needed for power quality. So do not don't please don't confuse. These, this what we presented today as um, being equivalent to what would be required from a power quality device. You mean about the device. amount of characteristics? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. extremely it's, reduced. No? Yeah, it's a very small one. So yeah. um, you have to consider a different device yeah. for this. You have the possibility to have a long-term recording in the with a continuous recorder with your, your power, your current, your voltage, your frequency over the time. This is a feature for the protection relays. But when we speak about PQ or IEC 61000 4 30, um, then we are clear on the power quality recording portfolio. Right. So, Another question. question. Uh, if the protection relay firmware problem or relay supply lost, Effect on the recording. So, okay, when the, um, um, the power supply are lost, this will not have, have effect on the recording. Yeah. But as I said, no, so as soon as this recording is done, it will be uploaded to the PQS, stored inside the memory on a dedicated computer or machine in the substation or in the control center, and the data is there as a kind of backup. Yeah. And, and it is stored on the device itself. So yeah. it, um, as long as the, the the scan has been has finished before the before the supply loss, yeah, or the before the power loss, um, then the then the record is still there mm. and can be grabbed again. Yeah, it it depends if the recorder or the power loss comes immediately and if the power yeah. loss is in, in unison with the actual event that you are trying to record, then mm. yeah, it yeah. will have it will have been incomplete. It's a problem use case. Yeah, well, that's something. I mean, you can you you can make sure that the um, that the power supply of the of the protection relay is sitting in an uninterruptible power supply. Yeah, sure. We have, um, uh, by the way, a redundant power supplies, Zurich Five. Yeah, the main power supply here on the left hand side, and a redundant one. Yeah, everything is possible. Take a look in the Zurich Five configurator and choose your constellation with redundant power supplies. Yeah. So that would be an option to make sure that even an event which affects a larger amount or which would affect other devices, um, yeah. then you have the option to still keep the, prote the protection devices running. Yeah. And then again, uh, also have the recording. Value. I think that's it with the, with the questions. Looks huh? like yeah. it's the last one. And, All right. and we are in time. We are still in time. <laughs> so I have a bit Two short breaks in time. <laughs> so I have a few more minutes. Thank you the auditorium for your contributions and your interest in this webinar. And thank you, Markus, for your, uh, for your smooth at parts second try. I mean, sorry, but the presentation laptop had a few hiccups, um, but we made it through. I think it worked pretty well. Yeah. Especially the demonstration went, uh, worked really good. Um, I think this, this is the most important. So live demo with Stixie and the Tikita Twin, yeah, and this was quite good, yeah. Mm. Um, otherwise, um, I hope or we hope you were able to gain some interesting insights into these new recording functionalities offered by all of the Cypriot 5 protection relays. Again, modular and non-modular. And otherwise, as already mentioned, you will have access to the recording of this webinar directly after the session via the link you used to log in just now. Nonetheless, you will receive a separate email with a quick link to the recording as well as a summary of all the questions, including the ones that we um, that maybe come in late, later on, not just now, mm. and we haven't been able to answer yet. One last reminder, the new recording functionalities are covered in a separate manual, the separate protection recording manual, which is available as a download in the top right corner, alongside the slides of the webinar. And additionally, you can find the manual in C portal as well. Thank you once again for joining and your attention. And most of all, that you rejoin the second try as well. Sorry again for the inconveniences caused in September and today. <laughs> Still, it was a pleasure to guide you through this webinar, especially in such great company. 
and we are looking forward to welcoming you to another webinar soon. Until then, stay safe, take care, and see you soon. Yep. Ciao.